Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege to have you with us. We thank the Lord for each of you. Thank you for joining us and for participating with us in the reading of the word of the Lord. I pray that the Lord would just give us insight into his word and that he would bless us to know him more in and through his word. Today we're busy in the book of John and we're going to be going through chapters 14 and 15. Now these are beautiful passages and we must remember at what time these passages are taking place. But I love the first verse of John chapter 14. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Now the Lord opens this passage in this way because there is something troubling that is coming. If the Lord says, Let not your heart be troubled, it means that there are troubling times ahead. Now notice that this chapter comes straight after Judas Iscariot is identified as a traitor and Peter's loyalty to Christ is scrutinized and the disciples know that the Jews are hunting them all down. So we can immediately recognize the troubled times that are ahead. But now as they are journeying and the Lord is talking to the disciples, he says, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. And then he starts talking about some beautiful imagery. He says he's going away to his father's house to prepare a place for his bride and he will come back and receive his bride to himself. Now, we have to understand this in the light of the Jewish marriage custom. In the old Jewish marriage custom, what would happen is a man would propose to his uh, future bride and when she agreed to marry him, he would go to his father's land and to the land that was uh, associated to their family and he would go and he would build a house for her. And he would build and he would get this house ready and once it was completed, he would go then to his bride and he would take her and then they would be married. So they were espoused in this time. That was how they did the proposal. He would propose that he would go and he would build her a house if she agreed to marry him and then he would come back and he would take her. Now this is exactly what is happening here. The Lord is explaining here, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. He is telling the disciples here, but not just the disciples, but also the church. He's telling the church that his father's house, that place is just beautiful and it's magnificent and he is going to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we can be also. This is the Lord proposing to his bride if we look at it in this way. And all it needs is for the bride to accept this proposal. But you see immediately the questions that come out. And the Lord in this passage massively answers three integral questions. Namely, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, how can we know the way? And the second question, Lord, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. And the third question, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not to the world? These are very beautiful questions and questions that really need to be studied. But in the light of the Lord proposing to his bride, he is saying that he is going to show himself to his bride, not to the world. He is going to show them the way because he is the way to get to where he is going. And he is going to explain to them who he is in the flesh, the deity of Christ in that. And the purpose of these questions that are answered is answered in this passage in verse 29. And now I have told you that before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, ye might believe all of this that the Lord is speaking here in these passages is so that we can believe. That's how beautiful it is. Now, if we take a step back and we look at it in another light, we can see that this passage completely explains the Godhead and the Lord takes the time to explain the Godhead in quite a bit of detail. Now he does this because if he is proposing to his bride, he wants to tell his bride who he is. And so we see that the Lord answers when he is asked, show us the Father. He says, how long a time have I been with you and yet you do not know me? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. What is he saying? He is saying that the Father is dwelling in him. Now this we can see in so many other passages of scripture, but I'm going to come to that just now. Then he says, he will, when he goes, he will send the comforter. And then he says, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. What is that saying? 
that is saying that the Lord Jesus is the Holy Spirit that would come. And you can look at this in the light of Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. It says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, as well as paralleled with 2 Corinthians 5.19, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The Lord is saying that the Father and He are one, that the Spirit and He are one, that the Father is dwelling in Him and the Spirit is dwelling in Him. All the fullness of the Godhead is dwelling in Jesus bodily. And so we see that the Lord is saying that He will come to us in the form of the Holy Spirit. And you can see how beautiful the Godhead is just laid out in chapter 14 in this way. And so we continue in chapter 15, and chapter 15 opens up so beautifully again. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. The Lord is saying that we need to be fruitful, and the only way that we can be fruitful is to be joined in him. He is the vine. And we are the branches. Now there is something very beautiful when you look at it in this way. The vine itself never bears fruit. But it is the branches that are attached to the vine that bear fruit. And so the Lord is saying that we need to bear fruit. We need to be the hands and feet of the Lord. If I can use another analogy. The Lord says in verse 7. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. This is the Lord promising that if we ask of him that he will grant to us the desire of our heart if he is abiding in us. And if he is abiding in us, then surely the desires of our heart will be straight from the throne of God. That it would be the Lord's desires that are coming out of us. And so John continues to write of what the Lord is speaking. But John then starts, as it were, the message that he is going to bring in the, in the epistles 1, 2, and 3 John. And he speaks about the Lord's words that came to the disciples there that is to the church and for the church. And this in verse 12, this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. And you can see that that theme is carried out right through the epistles of John. And he continues in verse 13 to say, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man would lay down his life for his friends. And ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. The Lord is telling us to keep his word, to draw closer to him through his word. And that if we abide in him and he abides in us, that whatsoever we ask of him, that he will grant it. This is where we're going to leave it for today. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Chapter 14 Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father? and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you, before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the Prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Chapter 15 I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth 
I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning.